Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with the Pet Finder API in a Next.js application. To get started, you'll need to create a Pet Finder account if you don't already have one, and you'll also need to get a Pet Finder API key. Once you've created your Pet Finder account, you're going to want to go to petfinder.com slash user slash developer settings, and you're going to want to copy down your API key and your secret key and record it for later use. After you've recorded your API key and your secret key, you're going to need to find a way to get an OAuth token from PetFinder. And to do that, you use the URL specified here. Once you have that OAuth token, you have to include it on each one of your requests in order to get a valid response from the server. Because the OAuth token needs to be included on every request to the PetFinder API, I think it makes sense to store this at the global level. That way, any component can use the token to make a request to the Pet Finder API at any time. To do this, we'll create a custom app component and provide the access token to the rest of the application via React context. To do this, we create a new context and then wrap the entire application in a provider for that context. Now that we have a provider, we need to use state in order to be able to keep track of the access token. Next, we'll fetch the access token using our API key, the secret key, and the documentation on the PetFinder API website. Once we've created the request as specified by the PetFinder API, we'll then console log the response. Once we've loaded up the web page, we'll see in the console that we successfully fetched the access token. The problem with this approach is that we are exposing our API key and our secret key to the public because anyone can take a look at the token request and see it just in the headers. The way we get around this is by defining the same request in an API route in Next.js. By doing it this way, the client has no access to the API key or the secret key, and it only has access to the access token that it receives. Now let's test that out by fetching the OAuth token from our new custom API route instead of directly from the PetFinder API. When you load up the web page, you'll notice that we still successfully fetched the access token. However, if you take a look at the OAuth token request, you'll see no indication of either the API key or the secret key. Now that we have the API route working successfully, we'll want to make sure to actually set the state for the access token and provide it with the auth context provider. Now that we're providing the access token to the rest of the application, we can now use it to make a request to the PetFinder API. Now that we have the access token available, we can use it to make requests to the PetFinder API. First, we use a state of results to keep track of the list of animals that have been fetched. Then we use the auth context in order to grab the access token. If the results are null, then we don't return anything. But if the results exist, then we return a result pane component, which will display the results in a pretty format. Finally, in order to actually fetch the results, we use a use effect that gets executed anytime the access token changes. If the access token is defined, we can fetch from the PetFinder API using the authorization header specified. Now, if we load up the web app, we'll see a list of a bunch of cute animals. If you take a look at the response, you can see that the PetFinder API gives a lot of information for every single animal. Now let's add a search criteria to our API request. So instead of looking for all animals, we're actually just going to look for cats now. By looking at the API docs, we can see that if we want to search for cats, we just need to add a URL parameter of type equals cat. Now if you refresh the page, you can see that we only have cats in the response. And that's how you use the PetFinder API. If you want more information on what search criteria you can use, you can take a look at the PetFinder API docs, which I'll link in the description below.